universe. Hey. everyone showing up here, you know, because uh, that fear uh, disease uh, is uh, starting to, you know, affect a lot of people in different areas, but, you know, obviously we bring great ear here, so it's not a problem. There we go. So, <laughs> there we go with that, and uh, we, uh, Kyle, we got a prayer today? We do. Thank you. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for our club, our town, our country our world. Help us to recognize our contributions matter and that we can do a big part by our little actions of good. Help us to be aware of those afflicted with COVID-19 and those that are concerned and impacted by it as well. Thank you for this food. In your name we pray. Right. Okay. Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Okay, and uh, four-way test is the truth, is the fear of all concerned, will it build goodwill and better friendships, or will it be beneficial of all concerned? And Jim, do we have a song? Yeah, we do. Okay, okay. Since it is the season, let's take me out of the ball. Oh, all right. <laughs> take me out of the ball. Oh, yeah, they have other jobs. 
uh, besides this playground. So um, uh, that would be great. Anything that you can bring to the club and to our community, that would be great. But that's just a lot of updates. So uh, we're going to figure out what we're doing with the equipment, and uh, then we'll be able to nail down the budget and uh, start doing the groundwork. Okay. So this is what happens when uh, John and I are told to do something, but we really don't have the authority to do it. Uh, <laughs> so like John says, we're just going to dump some, a pile of gravel. We're going to just throw some old Tonkin trucks out there, get a couple logs, throw them out there, maybe get some shovels and picks that the kids can hurt themselves with. Well, they have this whole thing that's called an inclusive playground where if you're in a wheelchair or if you have any kind of issues, uh, there's going to be activities in this play area for you. And so, of course, this is what we should do. This is what, you know, Patrick would want, uh, this kind of play area. But it, uh, John and our, my skill set has been grounded and we are actually going to have- We got fired from that part. We got, we got fired. But we're still in charge of fundraising. <laughs> so we're going to still get the money and stuff to do this. But the point is, I think when we're done, this will be basically a world-class play area in Skagit County. And so uh, we didn't get it done this year, but the goal is, is that we're going to have it done by probably uh, sometime in September of this year to uh, uh, have it and I think it's going to be really nice. So thank you, John, for helping us get it through there, and thank everyone else um, that's been involved in it. All right, Phil Mahaley told me that I've done a terrible job this year telling people to recycle their bottles of water and everything at the end of the day. So um, he's got a bucket there, see? Uh, and uh, when we're done, Instead of throwing it in the garbage, put it in the recycling. And Bill, is there anything else I should add to this? Uh, well, you can start by telling the truth that I did not say. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, just leave the water bottles on the tables and take them out and pick them up and all recycle. Right, that's all. Right. It sounded better, Phil, when I <laughs> made it my <laughs> new. It doesn't have to be a, the truth to be a good story. <laughs> All right. So we're whipping right along here. Um, are we going to spin? Is, is that where we're at? Do you have any more announcements? Oh, any, any more announcements? Mike, you're in charge now. Well, I'm Take it over. Okay, well, let's have a raffle. Anybody that's leaving early, uh, make sure you apologize for traffic for walking out. I know it's a little quiet on the uh, presentation here. But you also need to pay $2. Uh, birthdays. We got birthdays. Mike Schweiker. Mike. You here? There you are. Mike Fashion, $2. Bruce Bergman. Bruce is not here. Hey, John. Jackie. Yeah. You know Bruce very well. We got you. Why don't you pay for him? Okay. Uh, T. Martin. He's not here. But Carl Garrison. Where are you? Over here. Well, you're on all kinds of committees with the dog and stuff. Why don't you pay $2 for tea and get it later on? Christine Pilka on the 20 point So $2 for all that. Anniversaries. Dan Sims, March 1st. That'll cost you $3. You're late. Sean Janet on the 12th. You have an anniversary, so this is considered as your reminder. <laughs> $3. Sheena Burns. I see Sheena Watching is here. 15th, he's sore staff. Who's your sore staff here? Well, who wants to volunteer to pay for this sore staff? And this guy, Tucker, will take care of it. Becky Elby walked in right at the last minute, so Becky has $3. And uh, Mr. Lundland, I believe you have an anniversary at the end of the month also. Uh, Travis, if you want to pick up, and I don't know, Dan, you want to help pick up the college also? So, this is where you're telling the truth. Uh, if you don't have a badge on, it's going to cost you a dollar. Didn't sign in, that'll cost you a dollar. And if your name has been in the taper in the last week, it's a box also. So, last weekend, I had the pleasure, along with Dan Cooney, of uh, going to uh, 
very beautiful spring day. Got to go sit at the Silver Ring Casino and learn all about rotary grants. Now, if you've never been to a grant seminar, why don't you pitch in another buck for that? I just hope we need to raise money so we're going to do it. Uh, in fact, if you've never donated to the Rotary Foundation, we're going to talk about the Rotary Foundation today, but if you've never donated to the Rotary Foundation, that will cost you a buck also. Remember, this is the truth. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go table to table, some uh, Rotary Foundation facts. We're going to see how much people know about this. So the Rotary Foundation was started in 1917. Do you know who started it? Paul Harris. No, it was not Paul Harris. <laughs> Want to guess again? <laughs> I mean, you've been to the seminar, both of you. Yeah, I don't know. The gentleman's name was Arch Trump. He was the president of Rotary in 1916 and 1917. What that cost me dollars? It's going to cost you a buck, yeah. John Smith. Okay, John. Well, you, you've been to this seminar. Yep. Carl's been to this seminar. Yep. been to this seminar. Yep. How'd you manage John Smith? Oh, you mean Bill Gatch? That was bad. No, not Bill Gatch. The, the grand seminar. Oh, it's the first one. Grand. Oh, yeah, it was the four grand. Is this the truth? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, who? Well, I'll tell you what we got here. The Lord of Kansas City is where we made the first contribution to the Lord of how much was it for? A thousand bucks. You're shooting a little high. I'll give you another guess. No, no, they gave their guess, they pay the bill. <laughs> they gave their guess, oh, I don't give another chance. <laughs> Curtis was close. $26.50. That's going to cost. Hey, that's just what I got. In 1930, the Rotary Foundation awarded $500. What is that foundation known as today? March Nines? How about Easter Seals? Easter Seals. Okay, Paul Harris, who started Rotary, as we all know, passed away on January 27, 1947. How much money was donated to the Rotary Foundation in his honor that year? Billion children against polio through the Polio Trust Program. 
In 2018, tell me how many dollars were awarded through the Polio Plus Partners in grants. And I don't know, I'll, I'll let you have a million dollars one way or the other. Hundred million, you're you're just a wee bit short. One hundred and fifty one point two million dollars was awarded to fight polio. Okay, in 2018-2019, the Rotary Foundation had a total budget of three hundred and thirty-five million. Well, 
today is my granddaughter Nisi, who is my daughter Bridget's daughter, uh, 10th birthday, and they are in South Korea, and Bridget teaches there, and the kids are in school there. Well, they are now doing everything from home, so she's teaching from home, and the kids are learning at home, and hopefully they'll stay COVID-19 free. And I actually have to pretend. Um, I want to, and I don't know if you can see the live but I don't know if you've been to the live museum lately. The museum has had a Facebook, and Joellen is the reason behind that. She has been working several weeks now on cleaning shelves, organizing, putting things together. I mean, it's very cohesive. It's really great. If you haven't been to the museum, I highly encourage you to go. She's also put together um, the gift shop. There's some fun things in there. T-shirts that say support your local museum. Everybody ought to buy one of those. Or copy them. But Joanne, thank you very much. It looks great. Thank you. Okay, so I have Tony. Um, so my daughter finished. She's at Texas A&M. She's so many. She's in her sophomore season. And she finished ninth in the 100 bag at the SEC Championships and 12th in the one fly. And then her times earned her three individual races at the NCAA Championships coming up in a couple weeks, and then she'll be on three relays. So my mom and I are going to travel to the University of Georgia to watch her do that. So I'm pretty excited. All right.
So we're going to, I think this will probably be a very, very speedy uh, presentation we made last um, So I've been a member of the club for a while, and I've seen a lot of auctions come and go. And what is interesting to me is to watch over time some of the things that we used to do that we no longer do. Um, and so I think it's um, time to just talk a little bit about what our, you know, what our options are about, what our responsibilities are as, as members of the Rotary Club, and uh, especially for new members that are out there. But I think also just a reminder that all of us have been here a while, and it's easy to just kind of forget some of the things that have been important through the years. So what I've done, I've asked a few people that have um, some good experience uh, throughout the years in the auctions to come up and talk a little bit. So uh, I've asked Phil, come up and talk about the expectations of a Rotarian. Uh, I asked Dan Sims to come up and talk about what makes a really great auction item. And then uh, Mike Rogers is going to talk about how do we get the crowd pumped up, how do we get the, the silent auctions pumped up. So just to help create a little, little excitement, what's our job as an auction uh, participant when we're there? So without further ado, Phil, are you ready? And thank, thank you, Rotarian, for your presentation. <laughs> well, um, I guess I'm thanking Travis for asking me to speak about the expectations. He asked me last night, he said, do you want to speak? And I said, well, I want to prepare. And he said, well, I said, sure, I'll do it. And I said, well, then you give me the job of being the asshole and tell everybody what I expect of them. Yeah. <laughs> You're the guy to do that. <laughs> so, I think everybody here knows me because of the only new members we had is kind of walked out the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, expectations of the Rotarians. My name is Phil Mihalik. I've been a member here since 1977. I was chairman of the uh, auction for 11 years. It doesn't make me an expert, but it gives me a few things to remember. Um, I'm speaking subjectively about what I expect from you as Rotarians, and of course I know all of you, essentially. So I'm going to go right down the line and hear a few. Are you ready? Okay. This is what I believe that I expect from you as members of this world of club. I expect everybody to donate to the to the auction, to their own capacity, and if possible, as best they're able to solicit donations on the outside. I'm sorry, subjective. I believe everybody should donate. I also believe everybody that's here at that time should buy a ticket and go to the auction. And if possible, bring guests, buy them seats, bring your family, um, if they're adults. Uh, I think that it's our job to fill the room. Uh, the years I was chairman, I was most concerned about making sure the room was full. And it always seems to get full, but as a chairman, Tim, it's the one thing that you worry about is having partially empty seats. It just doesn't look good. So uh, I believe it's your job to go if you're here and bring somebody if you're able to. And uh, that brings me to setup and cleanup. The auction day, I believe, is a work day. It's our, it, the auction defines this Rotary Club. And I believe everybody should look at it as a work day. It's a fun day, but it's a work day. And I think everyone that's in this club should do what they can with the time they have available on that day to help set up and help clean up, and also help guests to, um, if they're having a problem with anything, our job is to make a fun event for our guests so that they can come back at other times, and of course, spend their money. So, uh, Bill and Ken, I have a brief that I'm gonna summarize. Solicit, donate, go to the auction, Bring guests if you're able to. It's a work day. Have, help the guests, but also have fun. It is really a lot of fun. And uh, I, I, I enjoy the day just being with all of you. So that's 
So that's what I believe, like it or not, thank you much.
when you first get there, walk around, look at stuff, put your name, you know, start the bidding. If you see a sheet that doesn't have a bid on it, put your number down. Now, I'm going to tell you, most of the time, somebody will come behind you and bid it up a little bit. That's great. If you see something that is kind of looking like it's going for really cheap, bid it up a little bit. Occasionally, you're going to get stuck with something you don't want. It happens every year. My wife bids on something and we take it home. It all works. Didn't really want that, but you can turn around and donate that back to the auction the next year. Hopefully, somebody will buy it for a little more money than you spent, or donate it to another auction around the valley, or give it as a gift to somebody. But as Rotarians, our job is to bid on stuff in the silent section. Now, the live auction item, our job is to be very enthusiastic about what things are. Not all of us have deep enough pockets to you know, pay $3,000 for marriage tickets for the church. Uh, but you certainly can put that first and second bid out there. I, the auctioneer is going to get up there and say, you know, who wants to start the bidding at $500? Go ahead and raise your paddle, because it's going to go up from there. We have to start somewhere, and that is our job as Rotarians is trying to get a starting point on these auction items. Uh, you know, you may get stuck not on live auction items. You just have to be smart and know when to jump out. Take care of your guests. I've said this before, I said it earlier, but if you're sitting at a table with nine other people, Make sure that they are, are getting drinks. Make sure that their food is satisfactory. Make sure that if they have questions, answer them. Talk the auction items up. And you can start doing this before the auction ever happens. Uh, you know, our website will list all the live auction items. Talk to the people you invited about those live auction items. Talk about possibly going in with some people and buying a live auction item. Uh, if you, get, if you can get four couples to go in with you to buy a dinner for 10, then your costs go down and you know maybe we can raise a little bit more money that way. At the end of the night, your job is to help the guests get out of there. Your guests and everybody else. Make sure they get their auction items. Make sure that they have gotten their bill and they know what they won that night. If they've bought something that's more than they can put in their car, Make sure you get their information from them and pass it on to John Janet. Uh, we will get it delivered the next day. Uh, other than that, you know, have fun. But, and as Phil said, it is a work day. We get there at 8.30, 9 o'clock in the morning, we work till it's all set up, and then after the auction, the expectation is that everybody sticks around and helps clean up. Uh, it, it goes a whole lot faster if, if we've got a good work group. So, I saw somebody, Marnie, you had a question back there? Yeah, um, just to interject on the table thing. If you're sitting at a table, please explain the dessert dash to your mm -hmm. people because the people announcing at the, at the auction, they can never hear that. And we go to tables and people are like, what do you do? You know, so if you're at the table, please explain to them. And we range from $11 per table to like $600 a table. So try to get everybody on board. And Explain to them how it works and stuff like that so that we're not running around in the chaos trying to do that. That's great. Thanks, Marnie. Uh, we're going to do something a little different this year with certificate items in the past. We just had boards with all of them intermixed. You, know, you had gasoline next to a restaurant, next to whatever. This year we're going to categorize them. We're going to have them color coded so that all the restaurants are in the red section or whatever. So make sure you direct your guests over to that area, make sure they walk through and take a look at all those. Sometimes the certificates kind of get lost, uh, but we're going to try something a little different and hopefully it will work out. Uh, any other questions about the night of the auction? Carl? I have an observation that mm -hmm. a lot of people wonder how much they should spend at the Rotary auction. Well, if you look at what we netted last year, we netted 207000 and the ticket price covered the overhead for the most part. So if we have 100 members and we net just over $200,000, then every single Rotarian is somehow, on average, bringing in $2,000 per Rotarian. And that doesn't mean you have to spend 2000 That means you have to raise 2000 somehow. And so if, if you put that in your brain as, as your target, you know, if you can't afford 2000 this year, that's okay. 
Uh, next year, you can afford 4000 That's even better, okay? But maybe you can work and, and be participating in some of these live auction items to add value to them so that you are contributing one way or another through time or, or money to get that money up there. Just, it is absolutely unbelievable the amount of money we're bringing in, and it makes our life so much better uh, if you just drive around town and see that. And I got I got an echo Carl on that. You know I've been meet, meeting a lot with the president elects that are coming in, uh, in July, and they are astounded what what we do every year at our auction. They're having little auctions and being happy to raise fifty thousand dollars. And I tell them that one of them two hundred seven thousand. They're shocked. They don't. And this is big lottery clubs, small lottery clubs. We do something very special. With people. And, and then you really want to get it, and you say, well, it's a town of twelve thousand five hundred. Uh-huh. It's a little hard to believe. So, uh, to close on my end, I'm, I'm going to quote a longtime Rotarian, Mike Crawford, who every year used to stand up here and get people pumped up for weeks before the auction. But one of his favorite sayings was, bid early and bid often. Louis? Yeah, i, I got a comment to make about uh... I, items that were uh, on the stage for the live auction. Last year we had a little bit of a problem and I almost had a solicit to help with Lynn because uh, one of the guys was really drunk. But uh, there were two sets of fireworks up there. Well, this guy took both of them. And the couple that had bid on the other half wanted to know where they were. So I scurried around and found out that they were out in this guy's pickup, both sets. So I finally talked him into bringing them all back, and we divvied them out to the, pre the people that wanted it. But we need a little bit more, uh, a little bit more scrutiny about what comes off the stage if there's dual items in there. Okay. And we we've got an auction uh, meeting in two weeks, so when we can talk about it then, maybe come up with some ideas. So, thank you. Okay, so that, that sounds really good. I was going to have one comment because that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so, if you're not going to make it to the Rotary auction, um, I have a conflict this year, but my wife is going to give Stephanie her credit card and John a check uh, to make sure that. Uh, I feel the, the love, right? I was thinking about I feel the pain, but I feel the love of this group um, so that we're going to spend the money even if we're not going to be there. And the only thing I would say with Carl's thing is you don't have to pay the $2,000 if you bring a friend who spends $2,000. So, um, so, so I guess so that's how it works. So I can bid on something, and then you can bid on it. We'll bid it back and forth, and then, and then I send your check. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So John's got to figure it out. And, uh, uh, and John moves. Well, whatever you do, don't bid against Bill Brock. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I speak from experience. <laughs> Where are you hiding? <laughs> okay, so other than that, you guys, we should be really excited about what's going on with our auction. We've got a lot of things going on. I think we have like 50 items right now, and we need 400. So um, it's that time of the year that we got to kick it into high gear and get the stuff done. Um, and believe me, it's so much fun being the president, spending $200,000. You have no idea how much fun that part is. And so I want my closure to have the same joy uh, as I had. And uh, we got some great projects. And this, this community deserves what we do for it. And we are going to make this thing successful. All right, is there, whoa. Wait, one, one last comment. I think Phil will spot on. When I look around the room, all of us have been at auctions before. The people that aren't here that should be are all of our new members. So if you, uh, if you brought in a new member or if you have a relationship with any of those new members that aren't here, we got to get them up to speed and this is the kind of meeting they should be at. Okay, perfect. Any other announcements? we got about four of them here.
Okay, as far as, uh, as, far as the slip goes, um, complete them in as much detail as possible. Attach it to the item. If you are getting an item later on into the months, turn in the, the white and yellow slips. Uh, so we can get those cataloged, even though you're bringing the item later. Uh, we'll give you the slip to attach to it if you bring it in the day of the auction. Um, my staff is asking that people bring items either here that we can take to Janakees or directly to Janakees. They're going to do too much work for people coming going in and out of business. We restructured that area where I was starting them before, so they're asking that we not bring them to the funeral home anymore. Um, so they should bring it. No, But if you are doing uh, multiple items, um, if they're an exact duplicate of, of something like some plants, you know, tomato plants or something, you only need to make up one slip, but list, you know, we, if you're doing four of them, we'll just give those numbers seven, eight, nine, ten. We can list all of that on one sheet if they're exact duplicates. But if they're a different style of plant or something with that, or an item that's a little bit different than another one, We'll need an individual slip for item. Uh, we'll catalog it that way. Okay. Um, just want to let you guys know that the boots gathered seven hundred dollars, and um, Boeing will match that, so it's four hundred dollars, and that brings me up to twenty-four thousand dollars raised thus far.